Um, unlike both uh, Khaled and uh, Arthur, who, who are poets who translate from languages in which they grew up, uh, I became a translator of French uh, only about 20 years ago, which is a comparatively brief time, um, of a language that um, I had known only from learning it, learning it at school and then living in it and reading it, uh, um, finding it often the lang my language of daily speech. Um, and in fact, I became a translator by almost by accident. I was at a, a conference of um, francophone and anglophone poets uh, in Grenoble in France. This was in 1989. Uh, and um, there were readings every evening. And in uh, the one hoped that the readings would be bilingual. Uh, most of the Anglophone poets, and they were who were mostly American, uh, had had work translated previously, and either their translators were there or somebody else would read the translation, uh, would read a translation that had already been done. And there was a French poet, a woman named Claire Malroux, who was there present, um, whose work had not been translated, and she asked me, since um, I was one of the few Anglophones who was um, more or less bilingual, uh, if I could possibly translate a, a longish poem of hers that she wanted to present at the reading. And um, with some hesitation, I said, uh, all right, I would try. And I went back to the hotel room uh, with um, with the poem, and I think I had a dictionary. This was before the days when one traveled with computers that had dic dictionaries on them. Um, so it was uh, a very much a novice piece of effort. Uh, and had I known that Claire Malroux was herself uh, the foremost French translator of Emily Dickinson, uh, <laughs> uh, not to mention Wallace Stevens, not um, and not to mention this would be later on Derek Walcott, uh, I might have been cowed, a, a cowed out of even trying. Um, uh, but fortunately, I didn't know, and I had a draft, and when I got back to Paris after the conference. Uh, I had been bitten by the translation bug. I didn't just want a translation that would make do to read out loud at a, bi at a bilingual conference. I wanted a real poem in translation. So I kept on working on that poem, and uh, which led eventually a couple of years later to my having translated an entire book uh, by Claire Malroux, which was published in English, and then onward to uh, now uh, an engagement with translation of um, some 10 or 11 uh, poets writing in French, some of whom are French French, and several of whom are of uh, a, a Lebanese or North African background, but who, but who write in French. Um, uh, uh, one of those poets, the, the Lebanese poet Venus Khurigata, once said to me, in French, but I'd say it in English. And I think she was quoting a proverb, and knowing Venus, I don't know if the proverb is originally an Arabic proverb or originally a French proverb, but it was that uh, the uh, translator of prose uh, is the servant of the writer, the translator of poetry is his rival. Uh, so, <laughs> um, and she said, looking side, said Venus looking at me sideways. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, Venus herself translates poetry, especially the poetry of Adonis from Arabic into French. So she too has had, uh, has had this experience. And one of the many interesting things I think to, th to think about when, uh, when we think one thinks about translation is not, not so much a question perhaps of rivalry, but uh, how much uh, is one concerned with fidelity uh, to a text that can be rendered in many different ways, uh, including uh, in, the, uh, in the most you know, brutal prose, this means this and this means this, and how much is one uh, concerned with uh, making a poem in the receptor language, uh, which is something I think we as poets who are also translators and translators who are also poets are, are concerned with doing. Um, 
and uh, Each perhaps time. I'll yeah, I think that you know, is, is one of the ways in which that thing about the, the translator, is the translator a servant or a rival, uh, com, uh, comes up, except that um, like uh, a, a good wazir, <laughs> uh, the, 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 sometimes, sometimes the servant has to, know, has, has to know a little better, not know better than the poem, obviously, but know that uh, uh, sometimes uh, the literal equivalent is not going to serve the poem best, the, which does not mean changing the meaning, which might mean uh, uh, changing it, which might mean changing a cadence, which might mean uh, having a choice between uh, three or four words that mean approximately what the what the word you're translating means, and uh, well, which one uh, is going to both is 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 going to bring the meaning over but which one which one is going to which one is going to make a good and coherent line of poetry in the receptor language which in this case is english uh, so there you know it's it's being um, be, uh, being being that kind of rivalrous servant yeah, <laughs> who, yeah. uh, who has the freedom to make the who who has the freedom to make those choices We're gonna